Good morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever it may be that you are watching this lovely painting. Hope you're doing well, staying warm. Happy Islander Day if you're watching this on Islander Day. Pre-recording this, this video is sponsored by the city of Charlottetown. Yeah, it is. We did one last week, and then we have another one coming up, I think the 26th, 23rd? 26 must be the 26 anyway uh, i want to give a shout out to them thank you very much for getting us to do this for you i believe they still have some art kits as well uh you'd have to contact the city to uh, get in touch with them about that <clears throat> excuse me uh but yeah they'll they'll have some more for the next one as well i actually just dropped off another 50 kits to them today when i'm recording this uh this will be left up from saturday morning at 9 a.m until tuesday morning at 9 a.m they asked if we could leave it up for islander day as well and thought why not so this is going to be on our facebook and youtube channel until tuesday at about 9 a.m anyway let's do it we are going to paint this lovely little red cardinal it's a lot easier than it looks it really is right it's simple. It's easy going. Don't stress about it. I've got five colors. It's going to be my red, my yellow, my white, my black, and of course, in pity pad and the blue. Three paintbrushes. We got big one, medium one, small one. Uh, that's about it. I have more than three paintbrushes here, but that's okay. Oh, uh, a pencil or a piece of chalk is going to come in handy as well. If you don't have one of those right now, we will need it in a little bit after we do some background and some branch and stuff because we are going to pencil on the birdie sorry if i if i look this way i'm just looking at the computer make sure everything's running smooth for the recording and then if i look that way i'm looking at the painting and then if i look this way i'm looking at you anyway let's go for it uh again don't stress about the drawing because i do have it broken down into some basic shapes it's a couple of ovals and a rectangle don't worry, I will put those on screen when we get to that point, so we'll be fine. Whew, all right, I got my coffee, got my paint, got a crack in my plate, leaking paint. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and grab a medium or large brush, either one, because we are going to start this by making some dirty blue. Yes, we are. So, to make dirty blue, we are going to take three scoops of In Petit Père de la Blé. There we go. One scoop of white. And then about half a scoop of black. All right, so three scoops of blue, one scoop of white, and about half a scoop of black. Now we're going to stir that all together. I actually painted this one not too long ago uh, with our subscribers on Facebook. We have a subscribers group there where I think the monthly is 25 bucks and you get seven new paintings every single, or seven new paintings a week, not seven new ones a day. That, that would be quite busy. Uh, seven new paintings a week, as well as access to over 650 videos that we've done before. It's, it's crazy. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot of painting. On top of just painting, we have like drawing episodes, we got some kids episodes geared towards the younger crowd, which is nice. Uh, cooking, science episodes, what else? Masterpiece Mondays, oh, there's a whole slew of things. Started branching into some watercolors and watercolor pencils as well with the group. Been doing great. Okay, so we've got some dirty blue. We are gonna start this off with crosshatch. Now, if you don't know what cross hatching is, don't worry. It's super simple. Just using the wide side of the brush. Let me just get a little excess paint off of there. there we go. The wide side of the brush, we're just going to be making X's. All right, so we'll slowly just a little brush stroke one way, tilt our wrist, brush stroke the other way. Just like a little X. We're going to start this off around the outsides, and then I'm going to wipe my brush off, pick up some white, and we're going to start cross hatching into the middle so that the middle is a bit lighter. Okay? Let's just slap some paint on here, and away we go. Yeah, I'll keep using this brush, that's fine. Also, if at any point I move a little bit too fast, which sometimes happens, 
that's okay because you can hit that pause button. You can hit pause, you can take your time, go get yourself a coffee or juice for the kiddos or whatever. Snacks. There's gonna be some drying breaks as well because we'll have to let certain layers dry a bit. That's very dark. That's okay, I'm just gonna put a lot of white on it. They are all gonna look a little different. And so is mine. I always tell people, like, I've been, I've been painting a lot <laughs> for a little while. Uh, and in the last two years doing like over, gotta be over 700 now, 700 videos online. Um, I've done this painting a dozen times, at least, and a dozen times, Birdie's gonna look a little different, okay? Background's gonna look a little different. The blending's gonna be a little different. That's okay. That's the nice thing about art. When we originally first did this painting, way back in the day, uh, we used to use ultramarine blue. Since then, we've switched to phthalo blue. So that's why I like to start it off by making a dirty blue. Ultramarine blue is nice for some things. And on its own, it is kind of a dirty blue. Whereas with our phthalo, don't ask me how to spell it, still can't. Uh, I like to make a dirty blue first. All right, gonna wipe off my brush. Didn't wash it, just wiped it off really well. I'm gonna start picking up some white and we're gonna start cross hatching. Now we want this to kind of blend with the outside, right? We don't want it just to be white and dirty blue gonna start picking up white and just keep brushing let's get some spots lighter we want it lighter in the middle but again they're all gonna look different if your dirty blue is still or sorry is dry like if you took a little bit longer which is fine you might have to put on a little bit more but this part super easy just relax there's no wrong way to do it all right that's what I like about cross hatching and these kind of simple backgrounds there is zero wrong way to do it you can do it however you like i'm just gonna keep going with some white here and as you can see it's already looking a little different i might toss some more white up there i might not we're gonna see when we get there painting's supposed to be fun and relaxing okay I know some people are, you know, a little bit of a perfectionist, and that's okay too. It takes all types to run the world. But when it comes to painting, I like people to relax. It's another reason I like to say that we're called art party, not art class. Because you're going to learn something, definitely, you know, but we're going to have fun while we do it. At least that's the hope. I'm going to have fun. I hope you guys have fun too. I always have fun. I love my job. My job's great. I get to paint. I get to paint for you guys. It's a blast. Okay. Just getting a little bit more white. I am wiping my brush off kind of in between, just when I feel I have too much blue on there. All right, let's see what we can do here. Get a little whiter in the center there. That's nice. I hope everybody's having a lovely weekend, or maybe you're watching this on Saturday and your weekend just started. Maybe you're watching this on Monday and the weekend's already gone. Hope you're having a good one. All right, let me smooth out a little bit of this. I wanna get a little bit of the excess paint off because we don't want big clumps of paint. And for the most part, I was using just little bits, but there is a few spots here that got some clumps. So I'm just gonna kind of cross hatch over them. That's a pretty background. It's got lots of texture to it. Lots of texture. That's a good thing. Just smoothing out a little bit. Just wiping my brush off, couple of cross hatches, wipe it off. Smooth it 
it out. My crosshatches all kind of ended up in the same direction, didn't they? It's okay. It's a little easier to crosshatch when the painting's up like that. Oh, don't forget to paint your sides. I know I'm terrible for painting my sides. I apologize. Maybe I should do these ones. Should I? Fine, I'll do the sides. Jeff would be so happy. I'm gonna paint a little, little dirty blue on the sides here. There you go, Jeff. Jeff's a stickler. He always, always used to give me a few like heavy sighs whenever I wouldn't paint the sides. I'm like, yeah, but I got, I got like so many paintings to do. Ah! Sorry, I threw my brush. Got a little wily there. Uh, <laughs> A little extra paint on my painting sweater. Adds character. Uh, parents, if you do get some acrylic paint on your clothes, or your kids get acrylic paint on their clothes, acrylic paint is water-based. What I've found is, of course, cleaning it right away will get it out. If it's dried on there, it is gonna take a little bit of elbow grease, some hot water, some uh, sunlight dish soap I found is really good and hot water and like some good scrubbing and it, it should come out. Take a little bit of elbow grease, but should get you there. I, I should be wearing my apron, but it's a painting sweater, you know? Had this sweater for, oh geez, when did we get these sweaters in? Like three years ago? Something like that? So just adds character for me. Pretty much everything I own is covered in paint. Pretty much. These things happen. It's okay. So let's do all right. I'm gonna finish off these sides. Make Jeff happy. That's my goal in life. You just hear Emily chuckling in the background. She's not here, but I mean just telepathically I can hear her. <laughs> there we go. That'll do, that'll do. If I wanted to, and I'm not going to because I am happy with this. Even though it looks different, I am happy with it. Um, but if you wanted to have a little bit more white, you could add in a little bit more white after it dries for a minute and kind of cross hatch a little bit in there. Anyway, we are gonna take ourselves a little drying break. So let me change this. Ba -ba -ba. That was the wrong button. So was that. Which one? This one. Oh, <laughs> too many buttons. There we go. All right, we're gonna take a little drying break here. I'm gonna say three minutes. I'm gonna leave that text up on screen just so you know I'm still here and just gonna let it dry. And we'll be back in three minutes.
<laughs> Sorry. Uh, anyway, <laughs> let's get back to painting. So, that had a couple of minutes to say. It's still a little bit tacky, but that's okay. Because we gotta make some brown. Yes, we do. We gotta make brown. Now, easiest way to make brown, buy it. <laughs> I've said that joke a bajillion times. I'm sure people who have watched my videos before are kind of tired of it, but maybe you're new here. It's the first time you heard it, and then that one's for you. <laughs> anyway, we are going to make some brown. So, with the medium or your larger brush, either way, uh, we're going to use our medium to paint, but we are going to make brown. Now, with the pigments that I have here, being phthalo blue, uh, it's just a red and a yellow, I'm going to start with equal parts yellow and red, and then I'm going to add in very small little bits of un petit peu de la bleu at a time. Phthalo blue is very pigmented, so a little bit goes a long way. We can always add more, all right? So it doesn't matter if you're not using our phthalo blue. Either way, you still want to start with little bits of blue at a time. Whenever you're mixing colors, you start with your lightest one, and you add in your darkest one, all right? Make sense? Lovely. So let's start off with a good old scoop or two of yellow. And then about the same amount of red. Okay, that's a good starting point. Then little tiny bits, not even not even a half a scoop. That's like a quarter scoop of un petit peu de la bleu. And we're gonna stir it together. Now, as you are stirring this together. You're going to see it change colors. The most common thing is it's either going to be orange or it's going to be green. Uh, if you didn't do enough or if you did too much. So if it's looking a little orange, like mine is right now, it's kind of reddish orange. That means I need to add in a little bit more blue. But I'm only going to do little tiny bits at a time. You can always add more. If it looks kind of purple, that means you need to add in some more yellow. That one doesn't happen too often. Usually it's either orange or it's green. If it's looking green, like just a little bit green, that means you need to add in some more red. If it's like full on, like bright green, probably easier just to clean out your brush and then just try again. All right, there's nothing wrong with just trying again. tiny bits of blue in the mine till I get an okay brown. There we go. Now we are going to do a little blending with this, but we are going to take our medium brush. Let me just move these out of the way. We'll resituate that on screen. There we go. Have another sip of coffee and then let's paint a brown. All right, with little bits of brown, we are gonna put on our branches. And we're gonna start them off skinny because then we can go back and make them wider. Now the only things we really have to pay attention to is where our birdie's gonna go. Because as you can see in the picture right down there, there's kind of a little, little space for them in the middle. So let's start this off skinny lines. We're gonna make them bigger. So it's okay if you accidentally go a little too big at the first, that's fine. Let's start from the side here. Drop down, we'll go back up and we'll go like that. All right, we're, we're, don't worry, we're gonna make it into a branch. I got you. Let's add in a few extra little ones coming off of here. Bam! That's a branch. All right, let's do the top one. Same thing, we're gonna go up. That'll leave us a nice little space for our birdie. We'll drop it down. We're gonna add a little one right in there. Boom, we got twig branches. Now we do have to make them wider so that our birdie can actually sit on them, not just like snap them. Gotta support the birdie. So with a little bit of brown in that medium brush, we're gonna start widening these up a bit. 
Now when you're doing branches, for example, where this one connects with that one, we don't want like sharp angles, right? We don't want the branch just to like shoot straight off. We want them to curve into each other. And the back side of the branches over here where it would reach the tree, those are gonna be the widest parts. And then it's just slowly gonna get a little narrower as it gets to the ends of the branch, just like a normal tree. All right, let's do this bottom one first. So I'm gonna start widening it up a little on this back side. Small bits of paint at a time. Don't worry, we are gonna blend it. And once we're done with these, or this part, if you're not a big fan of your branches, that's okay because we're gonna put snow on it. And snow will fix anything you don't like. It's magic. There's always a way to fix it. I got a few good quotes that I, uh, I repeat a lot. One of them is kind of a mix of uh, a couple of different quotes. It's kind of half taken from the legend Bob Ross, and the other half, I can't remember where I got it from. But the quote is, there's no such thing as a mistake, that part's from Bob Ross, only interesting solutions, that part's from somewhere else, I can't remember where. So, there's no such thing as a mistake, only interesting solutions. And I really like that one because it's true. If you make a little, a little whoopsie-doo, well, that's okay. It can be fixed. We just got to, you know, think of an interesting way to fix it. And with our tree branch, nice easy way to fix it is just going to be to put some snow on it. go so you can see how over here on the ends of the branches they're a little bit skinnier than over here on that side so I just had to smooth this guy out a little not smooth them out just widen them up there we go because branches are supposed to have some bumps on them it's a tree all right let's do the same thing up top here made him a little bit too wide right there but like I said we're gonna put some snow on it no worries all right now while this branch is still wet I didn't clean my brush I just gave it a little bit of a wipe I still want a little touch of brown on there I am gonna pick up a very very small little bit of white just a little pinprick and we're gonna blend a little bit of that into the tops of these branches. Now again, we'll be putting snow on it, so don't stress. But we're gonna blend a little bit of white into the tops. And we're gonna do the same thing with a little tiny touch of black. And I mean very little tiny pinprick of black to the bottoms. So that we get like a light side and a dark side throughout our branch. That was a little much. Let me just smooth that out. There we go. And then I'm going to make sure I have a little bit of brown on my brush. I'm going to pick up a just a little tiny pinprick of black. Less is more. Black is a very powerful color. It'll overtake your painting, so little bits at a time. You can always add more, but little bit, be patient, take your time. Again, 
you guys don't have to paint as quick as me. That's why we are recording and leaving it up for a few days. On top of that, whenever you guys are done, if you want to, you are more than welcome to post your pictures and uh, tag us. Tag us in your pictures. I love, love seeing everybody's paintings afterwards. And I just, I think it's great. That is one of my favorite things about this job, other than, you know, I get to paint all the time. But one of my favorite things about teaching people to paint is at the end, when, when I see them all, you know? When I see how everybody looks at things a little bit differently, everybody's colors are slightly different, everybody's shape is just a little different, they're all unique. I love it, I love it. So, please, if you want to, take some pictures of your art, post it, tag us. Uh, yeah, I would love to see them, all right? And when you guys tag East Coast, like, I, I get the notifications as well, so I'll be able to go in and see them right away. And I think that's absolutely wonderful. Okay, we are going to let this dry for just one minute. Uh, and then I am... Well, actually, while it's drying, why don't I put the drawings up on screen? And, yeah, then we can take a little break to let that, that dry and let you guys draw. Because I'll have to draw my birdie on there as well. That sounds like a wonderful idea. So let me just get that all situated on screen. There we go. Da -da, da -da. Okay, now I am going to leave this up here for a couple of minutes. All right, I'm not going to rush this, but these are our basic shapes. The red in the top left corner there is your ovals and rectangle. Moving on to the second one, I usually like overlay what the final product is so you can see how those shapes make our final shape. Now, when you're doing this in pencil, you're, you're gonna wanna do light little pencil lines. Don't put your pencil on there and press really hard. Okay, take your time, take it easy and just lightly. Now you can wait a minute or two because your branch does have to dry, but that right down there is what we are looking to end with. And before we get back painting, I'm gonna set a little timer here for probably another three minutes. Before we get back painting, I will let you guys know that I'm going to start again before I take these pictures off screen. That way, anybody who still needs time can hit pause before I keep going. All right, so a little three minutes. We'll be right back.
Okay, guys, I am going to sketch mine on right now. That'll give you guys another minute to, uh, to do those sketches. I'm going to put mine on very lightly with some pencil. And then we will get back to painting. Now, one thing about this dirty blue, when you're painting red over it, it kind of has a little bit of a pinkish hue, but that's okay. We can always do two coats if we need. That's the nice thing about acrylic paint and how it dries fairly quickly. If we want things to be more red or more whatever color, we just go ahead and do another coat once the first coat is dry. That's the thing. First coat's got to be completely dry before you do a second coat on any painting when it comes to acrylics. Because if your first coat is not fully dry, then what happens is instead of putting paint on, you actually take off that first layer. And it leaves you with a more white canvas, which is not what we ever really want. So there's a little tip for you. Is before you're ever doing second coats, just make sure your first coat is nice and dry. All right, let's get this little tail. Now I know in the drawing we didn't put that little whoop at the top of his head. That's okay, we're gonna put it with some paint. So you can take your little or medium brush, either one for this, and I'm gonna start off with just red. We are gonna keep all of our brush strokes in the same direction as the feathers. So instead of just going back and forth and filling it all in with red, we're gonna start like following the shape of his body and his head. And that's how you paint animals, whether it's feather, whether it's fur, any of that. We follow the, oh, I'm leaning off camera. Ah, that's okay. Uh, we follow the direction of their feathers or their fur. So I'm just doing some little brush strokes right now. I am using a medium brush. I will switch to my small brush afterwards. Working on the body here, following the direction of his feathers. Nice and simple. Yeah, I'm probably gonna slap another coat of red on here. But that'll be all right. That's why we do thin coats. And I'm going to get it really close to this branch near the bottom there, too. Again, there's going to be a little snow in there, so don't stress. Just a happy little birdie. Well, I'm going to do the head first, then we'll do that little whoop at the top. And even though we're going to do some black on his face, we're still going to do it in red first. All right. Now we gotta give him a little, a little whoop. Might have to change the shape of this wing as well. Any small tweaks. So light little brush strokes, just getting some red going up. Start that out small. Mm. 
Not bad. Got himself a little mohawk. Ah, oh, I used to have a mohawk. Oh, those were the good old days. <laughs> Funny. I, I did have a mohawk for... Oh, it was like a solid year. Back when I was uh, living in D.C. Um, it was funny. I, I had somewhat long hair. Longer than it is right now. I know nobody's seen it in a while because I've been wearing a toque. Because it's colder. Yeah. But I'm just going to ramble for a minute while we're doing this. Because why not? But yeah, I had somewhat, somewhat long hair. I mean, it wasn't like past my shoulders or anything. And I don't know what uh, what struck me one day, and I just I literally buzzed and then shaved the sides of it, and I had this like six inch mohawk. Oh, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. I think everybody should go through, you know, some weird hair phases, unless your parents tell you not to, and then don't. Okay, listen to your parents. I'm not gonna let my daughter shave her head. I mean, if she really wanted to, probably, but we would talk about it first. <laughs> Do occasionally let her put some non-permanent hair dye in. So, I mean, that's okay. And that's more, her mother does that, not me. Okay. Very pretty. Uh, I, should, I should change his shoulder a little. Anyway, I don't know how I got on the topic of hair. Oh, yeah, mohawk. Sorry, sometimes I just ramble on these because, well, I'm going to talk to myself sometimes and, you know, just go from there. Let's, let's go. All right, I'm going to get a little bit more red on here, and then we can start in to a little bit of a darker red. And then maybe a little pinprick of black. All right. Before we do a darker red, we're going to have to make that color. Let's go ahead and make ourselves just the tiniest little bit of orange. And that's going to be for the beak. So that is just a little bit of yellow, some red, and I'm going to put a little pinprick of white into it. Just to help it cover. We got ourselves a little beak. I'll adjust that shape a little bit when we do some black, but Birdie Birdie's coming along. All right, now we got to make a darker red. So we're going to take some red and we're going to add in very, 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 very small pinpricks of black. Because if we add in a little bit too much black, it is going to turn purple. Because black usually has underlying tones of blue. So we don't want it to be purple. We just want it to be like a, like a crimson red. A bit darker. I'm going to use a little bit of this to accent some of my birdie's feathers. And back of the head. I might add a little tiny bit of black. And then some white. And then we just got a few little things left to do. It's just going to give us some, some darker spots. See? It's all just about adding layers. With any animal, bird, dog, cat, cow. It's all about adding layers. I've done quite a few cow paintings. i got to come up with a new cow painting. Cow paintings are fun. I like cow paintings. There we go. We got a few spots that are a bit darker. Let's go ahead and grab a little pinprick of black. That was going to be for the fur. Oh, sorry, fur. Feathers first. Not that little part around his beak. I'm going to use my super tiny brush for that. Just little accents, little tiny bits. I don't want too much. Just 
less is more. Again, you can always add more, hard to take it away. Cute. All right. Take a little tiny brush. And we're going to do little bits of black before we do some white. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> now, when you're using a little brush, a couple of tips here. Hold it close to the bristles. Okay. No need to hold it back here. Hold it really close. All right. When you're doing black, the lighter you press, the skinnier the lines will be. So you go really lightly and slowly. Don't rush this part. Okay very lightly and slowly. I also like to wet my brush just a smidge before picking up some black, just to help it flow a little bit better. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna give this beak a little bit of shape and we're gonna add in this black part. So I'm gonna put this on and then I will, uh, yeah, <laughs> words. I will hold it up closer to the camera so you guys can get a better view of it, all right? So, little bits at a time. Start adding in some of this black. Again, always starting a little bit smaller than you think it should be. Because it's it's easy to make it bigger, right? It's hard to make it smaller. Not impossible, but can be tricky. the line on his beak a little bit too big. That's okay. I'm going to put a little white on it. Not right this second, but when we when we get to that part. Okay. It's like he's wearing a little mask. Not bad. Not bad. Now let's take a little bit of white on this little tiny brush and let's accent our birdie. This time I'm not going to wet my brush because my water is dirty. So just white, nice and light, little bits. Let's accent our little birdie. And it's these little details that really make them, make them pop, make them stand out. So take your time with them. Have fun. No rush. And again, it's a birdie. They're all going to look different. And as you can see, mine's already looking different. But that is okay. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, maybe a little bit more on this wing. That's a pretty big white mark on his cheek. That's okay. Looks like he's ready for battle. <laughs> he cute. A uh, little bit of white on the beak. And then where his eye is going to be. I'm going to put a little bit of white first. Okay. And then with the back side of my little brush, I'm going to put a little dot of black inside. Now, 
Now, we are going to put a little dot of white inside that as well, but we're going to let it sit for a few minutes. And while that's sitting, we will do all the rest of the snow. We'll come back and we'll finish it with that little dot. So we need to add in a few more branches done with just white. So I'm going to go back to my medium brush, which I think still has some red on it. So I'm going to clean it. Then we're going to go in with some white. Let's add in a couple little branches. And then we're going to put snow on the tops of all of these branches. So I'm still going to use that medium brush. Pick on up some white. And on the top, I'm going to kind of dab and drag my brush. So we can kind of dab it and drag it along. So that it gives it a little bit of texture. And we want some of that on the tops of all of them. And this is where I said, like, this part of the branch, I made it a little bit too wide. I'm just going to put some snow on it. And it's fixed. Lovely. Beauteous. Do a little bit on our birdie's branch. Gonna go over top of his wing over here though. There we go. Oh, got a little bit of red in that one. That's okay. Nice. Now, for the snowflakes that are all around our birdie, we are going to use the back side of our medium brush. We're going to dip it in white. We're going to go boop, boop, boop. And when you're doing these, you do want to bounce around your canvas. Now, I don't have any of these snowflakes on the birdie. I did keep them just around the birdie. You can put wherever you like. But you do want to try and bounce around your canvas a bit, just so you don't stay in one spot for too long. Get them a little bit more random. <laughs> Mine turned into a pattern anyways. Usually I tell people you want to bounce around so that your snowflakes don't turn into a pattern. Because your brain likes patterns. At any age, your brain automatically likes patterns. Okay, that's not bad. <laughs> but mine kind of did turn into a little bit of a pattern. All right, now I'm going to go back to my little brush, back side of it, and I'm going to put the smallest dot of white on top of that black one. Itty bitty. There we go. All right, so... Whenever you are finished with that, you are going to have to go ahead and do the most important part of any painting, which would be clean up your mess. Actually, it's sign it and then clean up your mess. Go ahead and sign it. And yes, if you guys feel like posting pictures, please tag us, East Coast Art Party. Would absolutely love to see them. Because I, I just, I love seeing everybody's artwork. And thank you very much for tuning in whenever it may be that you are tuning in. Don't forget to check out East Coast Art Party on Facebook. The upcoming in-person events we have on eastcoastartparty.com. 
We also have them listed as virtual as well. So if you're not in PEI, but you still want to attend one, we can accommodate that for most of our events where we'll just give you a Zoom link and then you tune in through Zoom and you do it with me here uh, virtually with people in the studio or whatever happens that night. Anyway, thank you guys very much. Thank you again to the city of Charlottetown. Can't forget them. Everybody give them a shout out. They're the ones that brought this to you. They will be bringing you another one. I believe it's the 26th. And that one we're going to leave up for the weekend as well. So have a lovely rest of your weekend. Happy Islander Day. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. See you later.